Good morning and welcome to Monday at Namaste. So happy to have you join us as always to start the week off with fire and strong focused intention to see only one thing and in doing so to know only one thing. So we don't have to make this complicated anymore. We don't have to see so many things and try and do so many things, accomplish so many things. We just have to seek and find the truth of who we are by seeing the truth of who we are everywhere. That's it. It's pretty simple. And we're going to do that today by sharing a message that uh, I just kind of brought out this morning that I think for me helps me to remember just to put on the glasses that have been given to me. If, I have, if I've been given glasses to see with, to walk around and refuse to wear them doesn't do me or anyone else any good. But the moment I put them on and I'm able to truly see clearly, everything changes. I'm able to see everything is distinct and clear. That's what today's lesson is going to be about. So let me share this. I'm going to keep my eye also here on the Zoom room because people are still coming in, which I have to allow manually. But I think it's slowed down a bit. So hopefully you all are, are here. Once again, if you're just arriving, the, the Zoom room uh, is now requiring that I either let you in manually or a password. So uh, after today, don't use this link. Use the one that I'm going to send out in an email a little bit later. Okay, let's take a nice deep breath. And let's find out what it is we deserve, what we truly deserve. You deserve only love because love is your very essence and you cannot receive anything that you are not. You cannot receive anything that you are not. Likewise, you cannot give anything you do not already possess. These are so simple, and yet they form the very core of the fact that giving and receiving are one in truth. I cannot give what I do not have. And in the, state, in the act of giving something, I realize I've always had it. If this is true, and I assure you it is, then the only way to know who you are is to give only what you are. Your problem has been that you have been offering conflicting gifts to those around you, loving some and hating others, and that has only made you confused about you, about yourself with a capital S. If you want, truly want to know who you are, then choose to see it everywhere and in everyone. If that's what you really want, you have to come to the point where you really only want one thing. And then the answer is simply give that one thing because you can only give what you are. How simple is salvation? It's like putting on a pair of glasses, as we just said a moment ago. That which seconds ago seemed so unclear now appears in perfect clarity. The one you were looking for has not changed. The one you're looking at has not changed. Only your vision of them, only your vision has changed. When you put on the glasses I am offering, you won't see some in focus and others as blurred. When you choose to see through my eyes, you will see everyone as the same, perfect and perfectly clear. So this is all we're being asked to do is to put on the glasses of I am or Christ consciousness and then to see everyone in the same way as we know ourselves to be. My vision of you, this is the I am consciousness which you're claiming now, my vision of you is perfect and you would do well to imitate me. It does not change and sees only what is real. I know that when I look at you, I am really looking at myself and I am seeing what I choose to be. 
You cannot change this truth, though you have tried for a thousand years and a thousand more. Simply accept my vision as your own, for it is your own. Then you will know what has always been known, and you will finally see what has always been seen by God. So, you're probably aware that this message is never, it never really changes. It just comes to us in slightly, from slightly different angles every single day. Choose to see only what is real. And then that which is real will appear before you. We, it can't be put any more simply than that. Choose to see only what is real, not, with, not that which is unreal. And then only that which is real will be seen. But it's your choice. And it says, you've chosen against this for a thousand years and a thousand more. Why? There's only one reason. Because you've been afraid to see what is real. Because you know somehow at the very core of who you are that that would also require seeing yourself as you really are. And unfortunately, that's the thing we've been most afraid of because of some illusion of guilt, some idea that we've claimed in our minds that we don't deserve this. You don't even need to deserve what you are. You just simply need to accept what you are. There's no deserving involved. Just open your eyes and see. Put on the glasses of your I am consciousness and see everyone is the same because they are. Just choose to see them as they really are. So Vicki, I'm going to turn this over to you and see what you and Teddy have to share in this same light. Hi, Jimmy. I, I actually used to have a really good pair of I am Christ vision glasses and I was trying oh, to brush and find them. I remember them. <laughs> yes, I know the glasses. Anyway, but <laughs> isn't that the truth? And the reason it's so simple is because there's no conflict in what's one. Where the conflict comes is where we try to have specialness. And this comes right down to our relationships. The reason everything is one love, one thing, is because of the nature of how we are created. What we have done is stepped in with a self-will to separate out some things that we think we want our way especially in terms of relationships. That's one of the reasons the course was written around special relationships and holy relationships. Yes. And one of the things we're most afraid of is that we will see everyone the same and we will love everyone the same. Ooh. And that scares that is, us. Because, that's pretty good. Right? Because <laughs> it also, in, the, in an ego's mind of separation, boils down to physicality. And uh -oh. you teach what you need to learn. Teach, teach. <laughs> now everyone's going to have to be physical with everyone. <laughs> However, Jesus has a good caveat in there because we are not bodies. We are spirit. Yes, and that's are. where our oneness remains. And how we express that through bodies is given to us individually as we give what we came here to give. Whatever the special gifts that we have been given, they're the gifts of love that we each have access to. And as we give them freely, we discover how specialness expresses through us without judgment and rejection, but through wholeness and love. So that's what I'm learning these days. And it really does go back to vision though, to see that everyone and everything is the same. Everyone, every leaf on the tree, every animal, to see the light in them is to nothing but appreciate and give of our appreciation and receive of the fragrance and the love that is being given it, it, naturally without an effort. But when we accept it, like you said, we are in that receptive mode and what we are receiving and accepting is the natural flow of grace that is our natural environment. We're restored to our natural environment. And then grace carries us and um, and brings its own direction. So this is very practical. 
And the ego is afraid of the practicality because it will eliminate the corners of specialness in our lives. And it will keep some people especially um, that we have special hate for, or special fear of, or special where we're still playing the game of projecting and of thinking of ourselves as unworthy. That's all projection is. When something frightens us outside of ourselves, we're looking at the place where we've hidden self-hatred. It really is that simple. Yeah. So be grateful for the projection so we can own it and not do it anymore and not hurt ourselves and not hate ourselves and not be driven by self-hate anymore, but give freely. And what you said, even if we can't see yet with the I am glasses of light, we can be willing to, that like Jesus says, see as I see, be willing to, and let the rest go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Let all the other stuff go. Just let it go. Just like Frozen. Elsa, Queen Elsa and Frozen. There again, let it go and do the next right thing. That's it. Sometimes I, I, I hear my granddaughter just walking around the house going, let it go, let it right? go. <laughs> I think that's from Frozen, isn't it? Because I know you right. love Frozen. And it unfreezes us. We've been frozen for so long because we haven't been able to let it go. And I love what you said, Vicki, that the thing that we're most afraid of is that we will love everyone the same. And, and that, for some odd reason, scares us instead of liberating us because we're confused about who we think we are. We still think that this is who I am. It's nothing to do with who I am. Just as my car has nothing to do with who I am. If, if I thought I was my car, well, then I would be in trouble. Every time it got scratched, I would feel like I was scratched. No, I love how you put that, that the thing I'm most afraid of is that I'm going to love everyone. Get over it. <laughs> there is no solution. Just get over it. <laughs> Go ahead, Teddy. I'd love to hear what you want to share. Well, I, you know, the more I sit, uh, you listen, it, it gets really simple for me. You know, what Jesus says in the Course is, listen, learn, and do something to correct the error. And if there is only love, and we really believe and want to believe that, then there is only love, and everything we've been given is given from love as love. So we learn to give as we have received, so we can receive more of what we have given, so as to give. So what I learned to do is just give every, whatever, I, whatever it is in the willingness to give it away. And the willingness to give everything away is the, is the doing of the correcting of the error that I lack, that there's anything that's lacking. Um, so finally, you're just like, you're like that center point on, um, and, and everything just flows through you. And this is what Jesus' function is. The idea that it all flows through him to us so that we can be, so we can receive as he has received, so as to give as he was given to give and that includes anything so the whatever we have whatever we have and have been given just begin to give of what you've been given and you have because if it's only love then more love will be received in the giving um and and the idea listen learn and do something to correct the error in our mind that there's anything lacking and what we all come down to is the lack of total love um and we are that and the only way that we can learn that is to give of ourselves by giving whatever we have been given and received. Just give it all away for the purpose of learning that there is only love. We are that. And we need not be more or less than that because that is everything. Yeah. That's it. That's, once again, how simple is salvation? Exactly. You don't have to be anything more or less than that because you are everything. It's, that's all there is. I love that. Boy, this is, this, it just gets more and more clear. But, but I have to, the, I think the only choice that, that we need to make is this. Choose that vision. Put on the damn glasses. Why have them just sit there? <laughs> They're right there. All you need to do is to put them on. Wow. Thank you guys so much. Let's see if there's anyone else here. I don't know. 
uh, I'm taking a little peek. Is there anybody else in the Zoom room that would like to share anything? And by the way, um, Ted and Lauren, I just added you to the, the mailing list, so you should start getting the emails. I saw your note. And for the rest of you, if you came in late, uh, we are going, I'm going to do a new link, send out an email today because Zoom has changed. Uh, so watch for a new link for our weekday uh, sessions coming later today. Okay. Who would like to share anything? Yes, George, go ahead. Wow, this was some wonderful comments and truths that came about. And just, I love, first of all, the statement about you can't receive what you don't already have, nor can you give what you don't already have to give. And so that's like the oneness is right there in myself and in everything that I give and receive is oneness with everybody. And the reason that it is, is for love. And so I like the statement from the Art of Spiritual Peacemaking, your book, to see as God sees, to know as God knows, and to love as God loves. That's a powerful statement for me that I use a lot when, when I'm working with this and myself, to love myself. It's just put myself in God's mind. See, as you're talking about the glasses, see the truth of who I am so that I can receive the love that I am and give the love that I am. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Yes, indeed. Thank you, George. To see as God sees, to love as God loves, which leads to knowing what God knows. Once again, how simple. It's just a choice. Once again, it's as simple as this. Put on the damn glasses. <laughs> Who else would like to share anything? Yes, I call Dave. You're muted, darling. You mean you can't hear me when I'm... I can muted. see your lips move, but I can't hear what you say. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a question. Um, I wonder if you could address maybe the difference between judgment and discernment. Um, so a lot of times when, when, I, when I go out to do errands, um, this is a very small and very friendly community. And so, you know, I, I enjoy interacting with, you know, the cashiers, the people at the checkout counter, the customer service, whatever. And, um, and then if there's a, puff, you know, if it, sometimes I'll, you know, I'll, I'll say, oh, your earrings are beautiful and I'm, you know, they match your eyes and whatever. And so what, what happens is that I do notice how very, very differently different people will respond. And, you know, some people will, oh, you know, smile and thank you and, oh, and I love your earrings too. And other people will just be kind of, mm, where do you want this to go next? And, and so I, I, I try to, you know, uh, be as warm and friendly to those people as to the others. Um, but it seems to me that there may be, there's a value to discernment, to noticing that some people are not as happy as other people. And some people are more in pain and more suffering than others. Now, I do think that, I, I think I get that the real key is if I'm judging the, the person who seems kind of grumpy and, you know, doesn't return the compliment or whatever, if I judge that, then it's me. Then I'm looking in the, in the mirror. However, if I see somebody who just doesn't seem very happy, if, if I feel only love toward that person, then that's different. And maybe if, that, if that's the case, maybe there's a value to be discerning. So I just wondered if you could address that. Well, what you said there at the end, just choose only to love. In fact, when you were beginning, the thought came to me that 
usually when I try to figure out the difference between judgment and discernment, that's when I get myself in trouble. <laughs> that's because it's me trying to figure that out. And, and me trying to figure anything out is always going to be confusing. It's always going to lead down that, that you know, road of confusion. Instead of what you said at the end, which is don't worry about that. Just give only love. Don't worry about what someone says or how they react. Like, ah. I mean, we're, we're always so concerned about what, what other people are saying or doing or how they're reacting. It doesn't matter. Just love them no matter what. And that's why that simple little thing that I shared a couple of times now, which is whenever I see anything other than that, it's just a call for me to love. It's a projection of my own self-hatred. Whether it's discernment or judgment, they're just different tones of the same thing, really. The only discernment that we really need is to know that only love is real. Only love is real. And if I can just give that no matter what and and don't worry about discerning or learning or anything that'll all take care of itself i will get myself into far less trouble if i just focus on that one thing and not trying to figure it out teddy or vicky i i, I can really feel you guys bubbling with this why don't you guys share something around that as well thank you hi jimmy uh, hi akalde akalde for me i always go back to guidance. When there's a pause and not a free flowing love, that's a natural, my next natural breath, go to guidance. If what you're calling discernment is just listening for the prompt because giving love ne doesn't always look like you're giving love. It may be just staying still and asking for help. But in that we're giving of the love that we're trying to receive. So the discernment is listening for guidance oh, for me. That's on. simply. Go ahead, Jim. You know, there's two things I want to say. First of all, what we're talking about, you know, the course gets really simple for me when Jesus says, protect everything you value by the act of giving it away. And it's that simple. And what I've learned, and, and Jesus is another line, he says, just say yes to your brother. Because what I found is my brother asks outrageous things of me. I just say yes and put it in his hands and half the outrageous things that I'm asked go away simply because I said yes. And it was just in the, in the agreement with my brother that my brother found himself agreeable and he didn't need to think what he did to do. So it's, I just say yes to my brother as Jesus asked for the most outrageous things. And for me personally, I protect everything I value by the act of giving it away, no matter what it is, because the more I give, the more I will be given. And make, what makes it easy is I don't need anything. I, don't tra I travel lightly because everything is given wherever I go um, because even where I'm going is being given to me in that way. You know, Teddy, that is the, perhaps the most revolutionary comment in the history of the world. Protect everything of value by giving it away. That's revolutionary. That, that is like directly opposed to the logic of the world or of perception, which would say the opposite. Protect what you, what's valuable by holding on to it, by putting it into a safe, by locking it away somewhere. Not by giving it away. You know, there, there's a great story that I've told before maybe about Dorothy Day. If you don't know who Dorothy Day was, she was this amazing woman in the earlier part of the 20th century who started the Catholic worker movement. And she was all about serving the poor. She was um, basically an American Mother Teresa. And she used to say, let's say, for example, you want to go from New York to Chicago. You don't have any money. And so you say a prayer and you say, I need $100 to get that ticket. And suddenly, somehow, someone gives you 20. Well, you go to God and you say, this is not enough. I need a hundred and you give that 20 away to someone who needs it more and then suddenly $40 comes in and you say go back in prayer and you say thank you but this isn't enough and you give that $40 away and then suddenly there's $90 someone gives you $90 and you go back in prayer and say this isn't enough I need a hundred and you give that 90 away 
Now, it's a funny story, but it just shows the logic of God. Keep giving it away. Don't, hold, don't, don't say, okay, I have $20 now, I need 80 more. That's the difference. Give the, even when you have $90, you're almost there. Give it away because that's how you protect it. Once again, don't expect the logic of God to be the same or even close to the same as the logic of this world because it's not. All right. Anybody else want to share anything? I don't see anybody. Okay, let's go to... I'm looking here for Namaste. Oh, I see George's hand up. Yeah, go ahead, George. Well, you know this. I've been going through this myself. I've been talking to James about it and to the speaker. I don't know what her name was, but when you're looking, thinking about what to do in judgment or dissertation or whatever it is, you're creating separation. And this person that may be walking down the street may not even see you, or they have something of their own going on. And if we judge it or we look at it, we're in our mind and we're creating separation. What we need to do is just be loved and connected to ourselves and let it go out. Okay, so you guys here at Namaste, you don't have your camera on. I found you, but if you want to turn the camera on and unmute yourselves, let's see if you guys have anything you'd like to share. Oop, where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Hi, guys. Yay, spotlight. Good morning. Hey, first of all, before we go, I, I, I see someone sitting there that we want to say thank you to. Right there in the middle with that bandana, that's Romy. He's, he's the one who did that amazing painting. So let's send, let's send Romy all of our love by chanting his name. Here we go. Romy. Thank you, brother. You did such a beautiful job. I'm looking up at him right now. There he is. <laughs> okay. Who would like to share something? Bonnie, did I see your hand up? I have something to share. Judy. Judy does. All right, Judy. We don't hear him from Judy too often. Let's get her up here. When you were talking about putting on your spiritual glasses, for me, I already have them. They're inside of me. It's not my physical eyes. It's my spiritual sight that sees the way God sees, without judgment, without uh, any kind of suffering or any lack. Because I already have it all. And so when I know that, and I call it my spiritual eyes, it's here inside or you can say it's up here whatever um that to me makes it so much easier because i don't have to find something because maybe i put it over there or it's in my casita or it's in my other purse or whatever mm -hmm. so this way um it's always with me so i get to travel light mm -hmm. and so that's all I have. <laughs> How many of you have ha, have ever done this? Where the hell are my glasses? I can't. I've been looking. I've been looking everywhere. Where the hell are my glasses? 